the tropics still brewing in the Atlantic and Pacific on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 11th. Still waiting for a named storm to enter centre stage uh, and we still don't have one today. The Eastern Pacific though is still on the cusp of getting a tropical cyclone soon and the Atlantic may also be getting in on the fun. Unclassified right now, no real threats to land. First of all, on day 41 of Atlantic hurricane season we have a 30% chance in the North Atlantic, out at sea in the subtropical zone. It could form as a subtropical cyclone and then turn tropical, or it could be tropical in its own right, uh, and that has a significant chance later on down the line. Day 59 of the Eastern Pacific hurricane season, and we have this one area of interest now, we've scrubbed the other one of course. 90% chance on this one still moving towards the west northwest and it should remain at a decent latitude to allow itself possibly to develop. In the western pacific we've now marked a 20% chance near the Philippines off the uh, eastern southern islands uh, and it will move towards the northwest and possibly tie in with another system later on near Luzon and then possibly cause some uh, issues around that region very uncertain right now what will happen there and in the north indian ocean nothing going on here at least in terms of tropical storms but as you can see a lot of cloud cover in the vicinity so quite a lot of precipitation today around india satellite imagery of the last 24 hours looks like this and you'll note a significant pulse emerging off africa uh, or near the coast of africa in those last few frames there red zones on this graphic show significant amounts of rainfall and a few spots over asia as well satellite imagery close up on the eastern pacific in the last few hours and you can clearly see this area of interest that we've marked and that's going to move very close to westerly and it's got a little bit of rotation convection needs to improve still on the northern side rotation needs to improve as well but it is well on its way to becoming a tropical cyclone it may not happen immediately or indeed in the next day or two uh, but we do expect that it will happen sometime in the next five days Atlantic looks like this and as we move upwards towards this potential subtropical development at least it is in the subtropics and that's where it's, it would develop there is possibly the precursor system and we expect that when it does make itself uh, known to us it will start to move eastwards and then turn northerly which is which will be better characterized on the GFS model when we look at it shortly. Uh, just scurrying round to the Central Pacific, a curious little blob of convection there as well. Uh, moving back eastwards again, back to where we started there in the Eastern Pacific on the infrared channel. And a lot of uh, high convective clouds over Central America too. Sea surface temperatures remain elevated off the coast of Mexico, over 30 degrees Celsius, but still a very cool area out at sea over the Eastern Pacific, which is why I have doubts over systems doing well over there. In the Atlantic, still an enormous area of very warm waters, the Gulf Stream is on fire right now, and an area in the Gulf of Mexico from Louisiana to southern Florida over 30 degrees Celsius and possibly a bit more on top of that, and around Cuba as well, very warm waters. Western Pacific, also warm near the Philippines, particularly near the northern tip of Luzon to the west into the South China Sea, over 30 degrees Celsius, but the whole ocean really looking very good there and a lot of energy and sea surface temperatures reaching 26 degrees along some of the mainland islands of Japan now as well. North Indian Ocean looks like this, Bay of Bengal still holding on to a few 30 degrees Celsius waters but cloud cover has increased so they've dropped slightly, Arabian Sea still that hit and miss game there and the Southwest Indian Ocean quite cool now of course into its winter months, uh, around Mauritius temperatures around 25 Celsius. Uh, near Australia as well, only a few spots reaching 26 degrees along the coast uh, as we expect and in the South Pacific, the same story there for Fiji and Vanuatu. 
Compared to average, it's actually above average there in the South Pacific. The East Pacific also above average in the main area, but out to sea there's still that big chunk that's quite a bit below average. The El Nino effect quite clear as well in the equator region and in the Atlantic temperatures well above average, probably three degrees above in the Eastern Atlantic and one or two spots around three degrees above as well near Andros Island in the Bahamas to Cuba to Southern Florida. Oceanic heat content is also t uh, trending upwards in the Caribbean Sea, particularly south of Cuba. Look at that big hot spot there, and also a few spots into the Gulf of Mexico and near the Bahamas. Western Pacific also looking good, and it always does, really, without fail. Eastern Pacific, though, struggling a little bit, not quite as much as last year, uh, but the best chance for systems by the looks of things will be closer to land. So the GFS forecast model for the next five days shows that we probably will get this system uh, moving out from the uh, western Atlantic more towards the central part of the ocean. Uh, very few landmarks in this area and that starts to turn northwards, uh, not moving very quickly but it does become a very broad system, probably subtropical at first but it does get down to a decent latitude so maybe it will start off tropical and then move northward and then towards the northeast. want to point out GFS is still the most aggressive model on that. Uh, other models aren't quite so sure and that's why we've kept it at 30%. Eastern Pacific looks like this. You can see this potential system, of course, that 90% that we've given. Moving due west at first, which will put it in good stead to reach hurricane status and then gradual mo movement towards the west-northwest. Basically, the magic number right now is 13 degrees north. If the storm gets higher than that, then it's uh, going to struggle with low sea surface temperatures. Behind that, another potential system there, a small one and maybe a third one as well in the far eastern Pacific. Western Pacific, we've got a complex situation here. Uh, two competing low pressure systems quite close to each other, uh, possibly coexisting in their own right for uh, a some amount of time at least, moving generally northwestwards and impacting the Philippines. At the very end of the loop, I've marked where the two centers are at the end of that five day period. And it's gonna be one or the other that takes precedence or maybe they'll both coexist and neither of them really get going. Uh, but the GFS, I think, has that first one, the northern one, I should say, starting to take over at the end of five days. And this will mean, basically, a lot of rainfall, but particularly out at sea. Uh, the Philippines themselves will get some significant rainfall as well. This goes out to seven days and you can see a massive cluster of pink there, well out to sea thankfully, where we've got massive amounts of rain and we're looking at possibly isolated amounts over the mountains of Luzon near 15 inches in that seven day period. That's around nearly 400 millimeters and also over Batanas Islands as well, similar amounts and on some of the other Philippine islands getting up above eight inches, 200 millimeters. Uh, but some of those isolated amounts out at sea, far away from land, could get up to 24 inches from this big, uh, possibly mess that we might see over there this week. So longer range, day 5 to 10, the Atlantic, uh, we've not seen much difference in what the forecast has been showing. Uh, its general movement will be towards the east, maybe then jogging towards the north and northeast, and it's going to be very undecided, weak steering in that area by the looks of things. And it will hold tropical storm force status for quite a bit, maybe losing it briefly there and then regaining it. Uh, but once again, this is the GFS and this is probably the most optimistic scenario from the storm's point of view and possibly affecting the weather in the Azores. In the Eastern Pacific, watching this train, will it finally come to life for the Eastern Pacific? Well, GFS really making a good go of it. One hurricane, two hurricanes, maybe three hurricanes there within that 10 day period. The first one affecting the Hawaiian Islands, would you believe? I'm not sure whether that will happen, uh, whether there'll be anything left of it by the time it gets there because sea surface temperatures are very low to the east of Hawaii. I think it will struggle, but we'll see. There it is moving on through with winds of at least 60 miles per hour near the end of that period. 
Western Pacific, here's this big mess. It's the northern system that comes out on top as a very concentrated storm in the end, moving in towards the coast of China, east of Hong Kong, and then gradually west-northwest was weakening very quickly upon landfall due to its small size. Watch that again. A very interesting scenario there. It's uh, the battle of low pressure systems. The northern one wins, and it doesn't last very long. By the time we get to the 18th, 19th of July, it is gone. Still very uncertain with that, though, and the track could change. That's all the serious stuff done. There was a lot of it today. Scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items and pillows that we'll throw at you and are still waiting for Hone t-shirts as well because even though we have a Central Pacific storm there, it wasn't a Hone. In the Silly Range, we watch that system continue westwards and it makes it through all three basins into the Western Pacific there and possibly still as a hurricane. Then there's that second and third system now um, and that, there's that next one behind it as well, a hurricane moving on through and it really does weaken as it continues to move out there. Uh, just wanted to check. Yep, so that third system becomes quite a powerful hurricane in the Eastern Pacific there, not far from where Adrian was and probably at a similar intensity, maybe a little bit stronger, but of course that is in the super long range and I wouldn't put much faith into any of that yet. You can talk about it though on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather chat and I'd also like to point out something else I wanted to bring up before I started recording which I've now forgotten, so that's excellent. I'll try and remember it during this section. On this day, Typhoon Thelma in 1987, July 11th, was moving towards the northwest and was peaking on this day with winds of at least 150 miles per hour. A super typhoon and really worth its appearance as well. And that was the only thing active on this day in 1987. I've remembered what it is now. It's... Uh, if uh, we, we'd like to know how people are finding our tropical weather bulletins, how they're accessing them, because we've seen some interesting view spikes in recent days for no particular reason. So I'm very intrigued and want to see if we can, if there's something we're missing, whether we can do better in expanding our reach to those who like our tropical weather bulletins. The next name in the Atlantic is Don. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Calvin, of course. And in the Central Pacific, it is still Hode. Uh, the next storm would be number 28 of the year so far. In the Western Pacific, Tallinn is the next name. And in the North Indian Ocean, it would be Tej. This is July 11th. The average for a whole year is 92 storms. So we've got a bit of catching up to do, but I'm pretty sure we'll get close. In the Australian region, next up is Jasper. The Southwest Indian Ocean will start this coming season with Alvaro and the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.